Oh my God. I don't know how I missed that, but like that would have been so helpful if I had clocked it. Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to, I don't know what we're calling this lines den quiz leak season one retrospective chat thing featuring uh, the writers of and quiz league. Um, I'm Benny. I am Looney. We thought it would be fun to just do a little, you know, end of season, slightly more formal chat, just to synthesize all of our thoughts and actually, you know, share them with you guys. All right, let's go. Um, I personally was pretty happy with how it went generally. I think that before the season started, I guess we hadn't talked about, um, like, projected like player counts or that kind of thing um but when like a ton of people played the preseason and then like even more people started playing the regular season um like having over like consistently over 100 people for each week i think that was more than i was expecting uh given that it is um you know this is not a trivia focused server or a quiz focused server uh, but I don't know, I guess the Jake Lyons audience, uh, sort of attracts people that like learning about stuff for the sake of learning and not just, you know, people who learn, like, cars for the sake of getting good at GeoGuessr. So there's some overlap there in terms of general interest, I think. Um, but I was very happy with the general turnout. Um, I'm hoping that next season, I don't know, if we can grow even bigger, that'd be amazing. I agree with you. I was not expecting so many people to just be like, sure, because... You know, we, we got a lot of people, and one of the things that I really like about the demographic of the league is that there are a lot of people playing that are not, you know, trivia people, right? Maybe, you know, they, they know stuff because a lot of people in the server happen to be smart, but, like, you know, they're not, they're not going out to a bar and playing trivia every week or something like that. So it was, it was really fun to see the, the, those kinds of people, you know, seeing what we put on and going, this looks like something that I would enjoy playing and playing it and hopefully enjoying it. I guess I don't really know but it seems like the feedback's been reasonably good but yeah i i, I mean I, I agree that week two of the first season is probably because you know that was when everybody was trying it out for the first time from jake's video and people were still there there's still some novelty to it all so hopefully we can grow but yeah i don't know i i definitely agree that when i was you know thinking about what i envisioned the league being like 200 players in a season was I mean, it's it's a lot of people, and it was not not what I was expecting. So, shout out to all all two hundred of you for even if you just played one quiz, you know, we appreciate you giving us however many minutes of our attention. I mean, one thing that we had been talking about throughout the season, I think, was um, uh, how to like balance the difficulty of different questions right and this was something that the trial week i think taught us a lot about and we were still learning gradually as the season went on um about like what's our ideal like average what's the ideal like standard deviation of scores for each quiz what's the ideal um like way to write uh like different difficulties of questions within a quiz so that you get like meaningful variation between the different enhancements and I mean, I think we're still learning about that. Obviously, like nothing, like none of the weeks I think are perfect, but that, of course, that's to be expected. And over the course of the season, I do think I found myself like in a little bit of like an ebb and flow of like, I would make a quiz too hard and then be like, oh, we got to backtrack. And then the next week would be like, you know, have a couple things that were too easy. Like, like, for example, in week two, the pirates quiz that I had was, I think, uh, harder than I wanted it to be. So then I was like, okay, I got to include more gimmies in the next one. And right, and then like week three in a similar like subject quiz, like the sloth quiz ended up being, I think probably just a couple degrees easier than I wanted it to be. There is just like a, a, a constant, you know, like like we're trying this and then seeing if it works and then trying this and seeing if it works. And then I, I hopefully will gradually hone in on something that, um, uh, on, on a style or a, or a strategy that we think uh, is generally going to get decent results most of the time. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, I I think that's kind of my my big takeaway as well is that it's especially. I mean, it's a pretty small sample size we have, so we're still guessing a little bit as to you know we have a we have a pretty set understanding of like how we want the quiz to turn out. Like we know when a quiz plays too easy versus too hard or just right or whatever for the most part, but it's it's hard to pinpoint 
it's funny that you say that qu that week two was your point of like, oh, I made this too hard and week three was your, because for me, it was kind of the opposite. Oh, I guess I'll get into this later, but week two for me was like, oh, I kind of, I think I coddled people too much. And then going into weeks three and four, I was like, you know, it's probably time to step things up a little bit. You know, these people are capable of a little bit more of a challenge. So would you prefer being able to write a quiz that gets like the perfect average you want every time? Or do you think like, or I guess, would you rather write quizzes that all of the quizzes you write, you know, turn out with the same average no matter what? Or do you think a little bit of variation in the difficulty of, a, of like quizzes as a whole between weeks on weeks is a good thing? I mean, I think variation itself is good in that like the one bit of information that people can see um, about a quiz before going into, well, I guess there's the title. And the more, I guess, meaningful stat they can see is the average score for the quizzes, right? I do think that variation is good. Uh, I think that the the variation between, like, the Sloth and the Pirates quiz was, like, swingier than I would want the variation to be. But, like, within a week, having one quiz be, like, an average of 3.1 and one quiz being an average of 3.8, uh, generally, I think that's probably fine as long as, like, it's not like all quizzes are like swinging in the same direction, right? Like if all seven quizzes are too easy, if all seven quizzes are too hard, then that um, becomes a little, a little more problematic. If I had to put you on the spot, like what's your, what's your upper and lower range of like this average is acceptable for a, a quiz that I write? Um, I would, hmm, interesting. I honestly think it depends a little bit on the quiz, especially with like how adventurous of an idea it is. Like, uh, take, take, take like the media quizzes, for example, right? I think that's where we went the most adventurous with our ideas. Like you had your like, like identify the language from the audio quiz. I had my <laughs> Rebus's quiz. When we're a bit more experimental, I'm okay with like something a little swingier. But when it comes to something that's like pretty constant, like, like the, like the general quizzes, for example, um, I would probably like, well, basically, I would say, like, if, like, my media quiz in week four got a 3.1, I think I'm generally okay with that, given, like, what it represented in terms of what we were trying out. But if, yeah. like, um, if my general quiz got 3.1, that is a little lower than I would want it to play. So, like, mm -hmm. it depends on the quiz a little bit. But like, like let, let's say for general, I'm, I'm generally shooting between, like, mid to, like, high mid threes. Whereas for media, you know, it can vary a lot. And for the, the for like a special subject quizzes, of course, there's also a lot more variation, you know, because I don't I don't know that we have our fingers fully on the pulse of the of the demographic here in terms of like what people are generally going to be more interested in, um, right. or like I can answer more questions about. Uh, but that does you know that does impact things a little bit. I think the the mindset that I've kind of adopted, to maybe just to be easier on myself, is that like. You know, I, I, I want to say this past week, there was one week in the season where my um, my general quiz overshot difficulty, and then my subject quizzes undershot difficulty a little bit. I, I feel like I feel like it was week four. So I've I've just decided to be zen about it and just say like, as long as in all of the quizzes that I write in a given week, there's some kind of acceptable you know, distribution of, like, nothing is way, way too easy, nothing is way, way too hard, and they're all, you know, if, like, I'm, I'm fine with, like, a subject quiz hitting 3.8 and the general hitting 3.2 instead of, like, my general hitting 3.8 and the subject hitting 3.2, okay. even though yeah. I definitely agree that, like, I, I think it's nice from, like, a feng shui perspective to start out with general quizzes that are a little bit less hard and then go into more specialized quizzes that test you know, your knowledge of whatever we're actually trying to test a little bit more. I don't know. I, I just try to do, do the best I can and then stress about it next week, maybe. But, you know, don't. I, I try not to lose sleep at night over the, yeah. the get rates. Even yeah. Though I have occasionally. Uh, just a heads up. I think your microphone might be a little like, for some reason, I'm hearing like some clicks in your sound. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask my roommate if he has a nicer microphone. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think my favorite quiz that, uh, like, my favorite quiz to write, like, the process of writing it, um, was, I think, the week four fashion pop culture quiz. Um, mm -hmm. and I say this be not because I think it performed the best in terms of, like, I, I think it had a good average, but the distribution was a little skewed. Like, like, there were the same number of people getting sixes and fives, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. but 
I had a really good time writing it because it allowed me to explore a lot of things that, you know, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily have like naturally explored on my own, um, but is still like a world that is super, super interesting, I think. Like the seed for that quiz was, um, I think I, like reading about how the <laughs> I'm Just Ken performance at the Oscars was essentially an homage to Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Um, <clears throat> Nice. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is a fun little connection. This could, like, be... Th this could be an LDQL question, essentially. And then it evolved Definitely. from there. I think none of the topics that it touches on are things that are unimportant in terms of, like, the fact that, like, so many people around the world engage with, like, things like high fashion or things like, you know, like... like it, it involves, like, popular TV shows and musicians and that kind of thing. Um, but I do think that, you know... The demographic of the lion's den is not necessarily a super representative demographic of the world. And I think this quiz touched on some things that, you know, a lot of people that were, that, that maybe had been doing well in the season so far might not necessarily be super interested in. Uh, as you can see from Jake's uh, performance on the quiz, for example, he's not the only one who's yeah. calling him out because... That's a like, very diplomatic way of putting that. <laughs> uh... I mean, I, I had a good time researching it because it allowed me to explore stuff that I also personally wouldn't naturally have, I, I think, have explored too much. Like, I mean, like, I, I, I'd watched uh, or, like, followed Met Gallus before, but I wasn't super, like, I, I hadn't heard about, or I hadn't seen Lil Nas X's, like, insane gold robe mm -hmm. that he opened up into a gold suit of armor and then, like, a gold chainmail, like, body right. suit uh, before doing the research. And I thought that was super cool and a really cool way of, like, him expressing himself, but also a way to tie into, like, the fact that, you know, he builds a brand out of his fashion. You know, that's, like, a huge part of what makes him so successful and popular. It, it, it was fun to, like, dip my toes into a different part of it, instead of just, like, relying on things that I already knew. And, of course, it wasn't just me, right? Like, this quiz came together super, super last minute. And I remember, like, asking you, like, an hour before the turnover point, like, I have these, like, four questions, but I'm stuck on the last two. Can you give me any ideas? And then, like, you instantly send in, like, a Louboutin question, which was basically all yours, except I just changed the pictures because I had the little black dress thing. Um, I'm, I'm yeah. perfectly fine calling that all yours. Like, <laughs> I wish that I had... I had had more time to really explore the different facets of it. I think it turned out well in that the people that should be doing well on that quiz, I think, did do well. And the people that maybe uh, wouldn't have done well on a quiz of that nature didn't do well. So I think it hit what it wanted to. Yeah, I agree. I think you've touched on an important point that we kind of try to think about when we're writing subject quizzes, where it's like, in general, people doing well is great on a quiz. But if somebody comes into a subject quiz thinking like, oh, I don't know anything about this, and then they suddenly get all the questions, like maybe maybe that's a, a general quiz should serve that purpose or something, a little bit more broad, right? Where it's like, you know, I, in Jake's video, he said like, I, fa he, I think he said fashion was the worst of every like trivia subcategory possible. <laughs> I, I thought it, it did a very good job because, you know, fashion is... It, it's such a cultural thing, right? And so it, I, I thought it did a really good job of touching on not only, you know, fashion for fashion's sake, but also how it interacts with the world and how we interact with it. I just thought it was very, very, very well written. Um, what about what about an individual question that you wrote that you really, really liked? <laughs> um, I think my favorite individual question, I, I touched on this in my, like, my weeks one and two uh mm -hmm. recap summary thing yeah. but i think my favorite question still is um wait where is it i think it was my um question on mr brightside in week one mm -hmm. um i i really liked it because as i mentioned there were a ton of different small little details that you could in theory pick up on um and i think uh a good number of people did pick up on them right like you could have picked up on like the fact that the title sounds similar in terms of like it's like an honorific and then a, a, a moniker um you could have like picked up on some of the lyrical similarities you could have picked up on like the general vibe of the song itself you could have picked up on like the fact that the the intro riff to mr brightside is excerpted in the guitar track for that song um Lots of really, like, fun small things, and none of them, I think, were super trivial, right? I'm hoping that different people were able to get into that, for those who got it right, um, were able to get into that from different places. And I'm also hoping that it's, like, a famous enough song that if some, if for people who didn't get it, there were some people who 
looked at it and then thought back and were like, oh, I maybe could have thought about this in this way, you know, and then like, it was subtly like training people to think like we do <laughs> in the writing. Yeah. yeah, that's a good choice. I think I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm one of those people that because so for those who don't know, we play test uh, questions with each other. So like, I will send a quiz over to Looney and he will, you know, not only just play the quiz to see how well he does, but also give thoughts on difficulty in writing and stuff like that. Um, and when I played this question, I you know, I don't really listen to the killers much, um, and so I missed this question. But I remember rereading it. I don't remember if I was watching your week one and two video or what I was doing, but it, it finally clicked for me that there was a parallel between Miss Atomic Bomb and Mr. Brightside. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I don't know how I missed that. But like, that would have been so helpful if I had clocked it. So, and this was like a, a good like week after knowing the answer, and I was still like discovering things about that question. So I, I that one that one was very good. I've been like thinking: is is it is it possible to like have a quiz in this format that somehow rewards you for knowing like harder things or things earlier besides i mean we we obviously have the enhanced mechanic and that rewards you for not just knowing but being you know confident enough to enhance mm -hmm. harder questions um my my gut instinct right now is probably not we we could but i guess it would have to be like we'd have to rework the form and the back end and all of that yeah which... something like like all six questions have like a hard clue and people either put in pass or maybe right. yes and then like you can't go to previous pages something like that that'd be tough yeah that, that's actually the one that's the one thing that i was the one style that i think might work maybe we'll do that i don't know it, it, it might actually not be that bad um but you program yeah, the I, I, scoring sheet so it's up to you to figure out how to make yeah it no, no no i <laughs> totally um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to try not to think about that right now, because if I do, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole, but maybe we could, it, it's possible. The quiz that I had written down for the one that I liked of yours was the fashion quiz, just because it stuck out so much in my mind. Um, I, th that's definitely have to say that that was the only quiz that I liked. <laughs> so I, I picked a couple more. I thought that the, uh, the super vocalix quiz, uh, quiz five in week two was, I, I just really liked, first of all, some of those questions had to be a pain to craft. Like, how did you even <laughs> find the, that in the North Sulawesi stuff? Were you just map scrolling for hours or did you like search using like regex or what? No, I, sh I should have done something like that, like gone into like OSM or, or open street maps and done some kind of like index on the POIs or whatever. But no, I just like, I, I, I like sat down for an afternoon and just like scrolled through Rihanna's map maker looking for places. Um, eventually I started like looking up um, things like, okay, well, there's a lot of like POIs that have the word Puskimas in them and that has mm. these vowels. Are there any like, like villages that can, whose names contain the other vowels? And then I started looking up those and that's how I found one of them. But like, it, it was the whole thing. I was so determined. I was so like... Like when when I saw that North Sulawesi was super vocalic, I was like, okay, right. this question concept's coming together. And then they were like, it started because there was one village that that I found like instantly, like Dumoka du Kechil or something like that, that was super vocalic. I was like, okay, I can find a couple more of these. And then that just took so long. But like, I was right. so happy when I eventually found three things <laughs> because three just feels like yeah. an elegant number. That's always the rabbit hole that you fall down where you're like, oh my God, this quiz, like this question can actually work. But then you realize like 20 minutes later, oh, it's going to be a pain to actually make it work. <laughs> Gotta keep going. Like yeah, yeah. at that point. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking through the, um, I, I liked that one of the, one of the answers on the super vocalic quiz actually required, well, actually two of them required you to produce super vocalic answers. And then the others didn't really require it there was just more the broad theme but i like i liked the contrast i think this is something that you do better than i do in that i think a lot of my quizzes like i pick a theme and then i kind of write questions related to the theme but i give my they're either like very strictly stricken to the sticking to the theme like i gave myself the constraint and the light quiz that just like they all had to have light in the words or they're just kind of somehow related like i think i i I would use the example of like my six flags over Texas quiz for that, where each question was just like, this country, uh, 
was occupying Texas in this year, like also very, very separately during that. <laughs> and so I, I really, I really appreciated how, you know, th this quiz stayed very well on theme and got to the theme in many different ways. Um, I also, I also picked out, um, what is it called? It was everything you know is wrong. Was that the 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 week one quiz? Yeah, quiz yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really liked that quiz. Um, I've I, I've seen like ten million different people talk about that quiz now because you made a video on it and Jake made a video <laughs> on it. And I swear other people have too. I actually have other people. Or maybe not. I don't know but, if, if they have. Show us because we want to see. <laughs> yeah, I. I it, Honestly, like watching the video, watching people play the questions is so rewarding, especially the, the most rewarding thing is when people pick up on a clue that I've put in the question to like disambiguate things. Like I, I remember in my, oh, what was it? I think it was actually the Texas quiz. No, no, no. It was the, it was the pride quiz. Um, there was a question about Louis the 16th. Um, this is so the last quiz of week three. There was a question about Louis the 16th that was like, uh, this happened in like 1779 and he reigned for 15 years afterwards. And I put that detail in there to like, to n not have people worry about, oh, like had Louis the 16th already come into power at this point? Like I didn't want people to guess Louis the 15th because they thought that, you know, Louis the 16th wasn't around yet. And Jake said exactly that when he was playing it and I was like oh yes this is like that's what I write these for like <laughs> it's so fun when you when you put something in there and then people actually pick up on it and do the right thing let's see I have I have a couple I have a couple questions of yours written down that I really liked the first one first one being one that I did not get in play testing which is the bienvenue question oh. um, from <laughs> your um uh, what, what it was the envy quiz yeah. yeah yeah I gained a new appreciation for it after watching Jake play it um, I, I think Jake got it right. And I think so, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not a particularly great GeoGuessr player, and I, I say particularly great, like, in the scope of the average person, right? Like, compared to you guys, not, like, <laughs> come on now. So I, I just didn't pick up on so many of the clues that were there to to solve, and I think that's fine, right? I'm... I'm also on the low end of geography knowledge in the server. So, you know, I, I should be missing a lot of questions like that. Um, but once I, you know, Jake was like, oh, you know, it says Mayotte and that's in this place. And like this place is in Rwanda and they speak French there. I was like, oh, that's actually a really good question. <laughs> so I, I think I, I think I told you about this. I think I, I yeah, I, I mentioned. Yeah, but no, that was definitely one of the questions that I really liked. Another one that I have, actually I have two more. One of them, one of them is the THX question uh, from your week four uh, audio quiz. Oh my God. I thought that that was just very well written. I don't, was this like something that you found during research or was it found that like, did you know about it before? The THX question is one that I've been sitting on for literally years. <laughs> like in, in college quiz bowl, there were like, um, like I, I, I led the quiz bowl team, right? But like, because quiz bowl itself wasn't a huge thing um in my college especially since like we like my a group of friends and i had to start it right there was very little like existing in, there was no existing infrastructure for quiz bowl mm -hmm. like we started the team and to get people interested we started hosting like quiz events that weren't exactly like parallel oh, quiz cool. bowl and right, so like right. a lot of the questions written for that were like sort of of a more like pub quiz kind of style mm -hmm. um and like this is one that like this idea of like um like cluing the deep note the thx deep note based on censoring out the letters and the like the sheet music for it was born when i was doing some research for that but it ended up never making it in and i was always like i i i've been thinking about this question for so like it, it's been in my drafts in my like my quiz writing folder for years and years so i was so happy to finally have a reason to use it <laughs> and like th yeah. that that was also the 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 starting point for this whole quiz like this okay this question <laughs> nice yeah i've i definitely have a couple of those where you know i've been i've been sitting on it. it's like oh i should i should ask about this i really like this thing and i want to ask mm -hmm. about it and then okay i guess i'll build a quiz around that but yeah i i just really liked like the the picture just it looks so much like what the ths x logo actually sounds like where it's like everything's kind of weaving together and then it eventually 
comes into this big like blah like you know super spacey kind of chord sounding thing mm-hmm. and that was like that i just thought, thought that was a very perfect description yeah I, and I, the I, la- <laughs> go ahead I, I was just like i was a little worried um that it would be too us centric so i'm glad i think that it played like it didn't play super easy but it also didn't play as hard as i was fearing it would so i'm i'm glad that like that logo and the loud sound it had was was like i guess traumatic enough for a lot of like not necessarily american people um that they remembered it too right and that's always the worry i have when writing these questions it's like it would be great to know how us centric something is but you can't just like ask somebody like hey do y'all know like yeah, yeah. this thing <laughs> they may or may not be writing about <laughs> so you just kind of have to i don't know do your research and hope but yeah that one definitely turned out well the last one, which I'll touch on very briefly, and is I, I'm definitely very biased in saying this, is the gems question from the Rebus's <laughs> one. <laughs> like, oh, okay, man. we could both agree that that quiz probably turned out unfortunately. Yeah, like it, it, it's it's definitely on both of us for not realizing. Like, we, I think we were so focused on like, is this specific part of the Rebus like American centric or like, you know, can you get it across borders and not realizing like, oh yeah, if you don't speak English as a first language, this is probably going to be a lot harder for you. But me personally, that gems question I thought was sick. This this is one of those where it's like, I mean, I, I thought it was like reasonably well written. It was definitely hard, but it was, it was well written. But the reason that I like it is just because it hits so many of my specific knowledge bases. <laughs> like, I happen to know what the Morse code for the letter B is because in the video game Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, there's a module where you have to do Morse code and like all of the ones start with B. So it's really useful to know what the Morse code for B is so you can quickly <laughs> like, recognize whether it's one of those. And then Gar, I don't even, there was some children, oh, there was a children's book that I had where they built like this big like car that was also a spaceship that could also go underwater. And there, were, I, I distinctly remember a line in that book that was, you, 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 I'm not going to quote it exactly, but it was something about something, something, you might shy the, sp- you might spy the shy stickleback gar. And it was this like long <laughs> fucking fish. And so I was like, yeah, I know what a gar is because of this random book that I wrote <laughs> that I read in like when I was like eight years old. And so I, I you know, I, I got the B and then I figured out that, that thing, I was, I, I was thinking it was a sauce or a stir, I was thinking like stir B or something like that. But then I realized, oh, that is a roux and I eventually connected everything. And that, that was a very fun question for me to figure out. <laughs> so, you know, it did, it did play at 5% uh, difficulty or get rate, but I, I, I appreciated the effort put in for sure. <laughs> On the subject of the Rebus quiz, do you, do you think, do you think a quiz like that is just like, completely no go in this league just because of the the language barrier like do you do you think that there's a way that it works or do you think it's just it's, game over it's hard to say right like um i think the language bar- like there there was the language barrier was enough of a factor in the one that we've done that like i'm probably not going to do something like this again maybe like i don't know we could do better to like pick things that uh sound similar in english and in like romance languages or that kind of mm. thing but I don't know, like not, yeah. Yeah. When, when we're talking about like U.S. centric too, like the, the literally the the first item in the first question is like represents the word courgette, which I put in specifically because I was like, well, if we have this in there, they can't make allegations at us that it's too <laughs> exactly. U.S. centric. And then like, wait a minute, the entire concept of the quiz is just Anglo centric. So that's true. Yeah, I, I I think that was actually referenced in some. There was there was a comment on whatever week that quiz was in on Jake's YouTube video, being like he was American centric, and somebody was like, "No, there was a courgette <laughs> in the Rebus." <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> I, I guess we can talk about my quizzes now. Yay! I have a I have quizzes that I liked for different reasons. Mm-hmm. I think I think the quiz that I will pick as my favorite quiz that I wrote is the pride quiz from week three. Uh, that, um, that's also what I was going to pick as my favorite one of yours. <laughs> great. Okay. <laughs> then I'll talk about a different one. No, no, no. It's, it's um, okay. You can, you can talk about it. <laughs> like, like, if you okay. Want. The reason that I struggle writing history quizzes and hopefully it doesn't come across in the end product, but maybe it does. Um, the reason that I struggle writing history quizzes is because history is compared to a lot of the other subjects, something that I just know a little bit less about. Um, so I don't want my questions to come off as 
just kind of like place name to person or kind of disengaged from what what people actually engage with or actually matters in history. And I felt like I struck a pretty good balance of actually like asking about things that are important and, you know, approaching queer history from different perspectives. Like the first question, the Mastodon question is like, hey, is this been here for a while, so much so that it was like the impetus behind an assassination plot. And then you get to the Thailand question at the end, which is very much like there's this group that is, you know, neither, you know, cisgender male or cisgender female, but is still a super like accepted group in society, accepted in that like people recognize its existence as a group. And I, not to toot my own horn, but I thought I did a good job of actually getting it things that, you know, matter. Yeah, wait, I totally agree. Like, um, what I was going to say about this quiz, basically, was mm -hmm. that, like, I, basically what you said, right? Like, I thought that it did a good job of, um, like, recontextualizing a lot of historical things that people are familiar with through the lens of, like, queer history and notable queer individuals, um, and also, like, highlighting specific elements of queer history as well. And I, I also do want to say that um, it... The, the reason I liked this quiz a lot, too, was that it really helped me rethink the way to organize a quiz on its own, right? Like, um, I, I don't know how in, how super intentional it was, but, like, it sort of is really nicely broken into, like, three halves, right? Like, um, not two, two halves with three questions each. <laughs> Math is not my strong suit. It's really well broken into two halves. Like, the first three are, like like recontextualizing broad general history and the latter three are specific about queer history and like when i was playtesting i didn't even realize this and it took like watching jake's video and hearing him talk about that i was like oh wait yeah this is actually a lot more elegant right um and then like after realizing that i was like oh wait it actually also is basically like chronological through history which i i hadn't realized either and like i'd done something similar in my current events quiz where like that was just for the three months of the year that had passed by at that point, right? So, like, I had, like, right. two January questions, three February questions. But, like, this felt like it was, like, on a different thing, right? It, it, it was showing, like, the evolution of a particular phenomenon throughout history. And I was like, not only is this, like, a great way to organize a quiz, it's a great way to, like, write a history quiz specifically, I thought. You know, especially if it's focusing on a particular thing that has had wide impacts for a very, very long time. Um... So, and anyways, I, I just appreciated the elegance of the organization of this, as well as the individual questions, too. Thank you. Yeah, I... The the two halves thing is a little bit by accident. I mean, it's it's kind of by accident. You're... I, I came up with this, with the idea for this quiz. Well, I came up with it way back, right? We we had talked, but this, this was the one week where we fleshed out all of the quiz ideas before we started writing any of them. We were yeah. just like, okay, this is what each of these quizzes is going to be. Here's who's writing it, and then go. But I, I mean, I mean, I was, I, I wrote this quiz essentially just, or I, I picked out the answer lines and the topics in my head, and I was just like on a train going to and from between Chicago and Evanston, basically. The, the I guess the problem with writing queer history. I don't know if you'd call it a problem, but like the older questions and the newer questions feel very different. Like the older questions feel a lot like, oh, this is how it once was. And the newer questions feel almost more current events. -y. Like I think the Thailand question could have been in a current events quiz and I would have been, you know, fine with calling it that. Um, so I guess it ended up being kind of, you know, broken down into in that way. It wasn't an intention. It wasn't, it, it, it's not like I certainly meant not to do that, but I'm I'm glad that it at least the, the the chronological thing was definitely intentional. So I'm glad that worked out because I mean I, I I did chronological stuff before with like the Texas quiz, but I don't think that was very. I, I think that was just like an oak. I was just fine. Like that was just, the theme was chronological, and this was actually. I I feel like you can see a little bit more of the evolution of how this discourse has evolved in the questions, which is good. Which is what I want to do. So I'm glad that got across. Let's see. Favorite questions that I wrote. Um, I've got, again, again, a few of these. I'll pick, because I didn't talk about this in the quizzes section, I'll pick the last question on the math quiz. The math quiz in general was something that, like, I wanted to do. Like, I, I play a lot of trivia, and, you know, I was a math major. This is something that I, and, uh, you know, eventually I want to teach it. So, like, math and math education 
are some things that I feel strongly about. So I feel like I want to, now that I have the opportunity to write trivia of my own, like I, I would like to actually write a good math quiz because I think there are a lot of math quizzes that are not good. And w was this perfect? No. But I thought that the last question on that math quiz was a maybe other people would have liked it to be harder. And I think that a, the hardest question on a math quiz, now that I've seen how it went, could maybe be a little harder just because so many people know math in this server. But I feel like this was a good way of stepping up the difficulty. I mean, it was a 26% get rate, so it's not easy. But it was a fair question and everybody could access it. And I was very happy with the way that turned out. It was very gratifying for me. This is this is like... It, it's kind of like how you were sitting on the THX question. I was just sitting on the idea of like writing math trivia for so <laughs> long. Like, like yes, you. I will force you all to play this trivia because it's what I want to write, and so you're gonna you're gonna like it. I don't care, but I I, I do actually think that question turned out well. Uh, yeah, I, I also like just appreciated this quiz in general because you know I I also agree that stuff like computational math is not asked as much as it could be or maybe it should be given how fundamental it is to a lot of disciplines um and i i, I know that we had talked for a while about like you know what what should the level be like what would we predict that um people would get particular difficulties at it, it was it was hard basically to predict ahead of time what the difficulty curve would look like because we'd never done this before but i think mm -hmm. that well, one, now that this exists, it's easier to, like, figure out that, what, like, you know, figure out how people react to different difficulties of math. And two, I think it actually worked pretty well. Like, it, it, it seemed to be pretty balanced as, a, as, like, a first math quiz attempt, like a trial math Definitely. quiz. Definitely. I mean, I was, I was a little bit surprised at how flat the three, um, the three non-computational questions played, because I think of those as being different difficulties. And they, they ended up playing pretty similar, um, so I guess that's something to take away. But I mean, the I don't know what, it played at like a 3.8 or something like that, which like in a server full of people that really like math, or a lot of people that really like math, yeah, sure. Like, if you're, if you're good at a subject, I'm not going to be mad at you getting a lot of points on a subject quiz. That's what we write these things for, so yeah. definitely. I, I mean, I think that's the the main question that I was really happy about. I mean, I had others, but they're... The math question is the one that I really like. That's, that's what I'll take away. It's like, I wrote this question well, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> Do you have any any examples of either of those? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of ones. Um, like, there was a question in your light quiz, I think. I thought it was like a, just a really, really good example of a question style that I don't necessarily... That you, I think you write more often than I do. Which is like, um, I, I as we were saying earlier, right? Like a straightforward knowledge test is something that like you don't want every question to be it, but I think um, it's important for something to be there. And so um, your question on uh, spotlight and moonlight, I really really liked because um, like well one, it's flavored with the uh, like the XXX Temptation song, um, which you know make, make like I, I think it just adds a little bit of interest. And if anyone got it from that, like you know, mad props to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for knowing the lyrics to that but like aside from that um like th th this is like a how how familiar are you with like the awards scene in recent movies question right um but it's it's not just that like it's elegant in a way that you need to have the background information and it's not trivial background information to have right like, you need to be plugged into a certain degree to be familiar with both spotlight and moonlight but um if you have if you're able to figure out one of them then like the framing of the question allows you to like pretty smoothly get to the other one if you do know it so like i think the people who had the knowledge were rightfully rewarded for it but m my instinct that because as it was for me was that um the people who did have the knowledge the people who did get it right had like a more interesting time figuring that out because if you don't know your like all of your oscar winners cold um if you like, even if you have like just slightly less knowledge but like you still have the you still have those movie titles in your brain um you can sort of figure it out if you, once you land on one right there are so many constraints it had to have light it had to be nine letters well had to have light had to be one word had to be the same number of letters and so once you had one then like it was i like you could elegantly make your way to the other one and i thought this was like 
um, a good way to design a question that I feel like fundamentally is also a knowledge test, right? Like you're not providing any particular kind of sneaky backdoor into the question. It's just like, do you know this? In, in general, I, 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 I'm hesitant to do things like, uh, I don't remember, there was one quiz that I, or one question that I really abused it, but I don't like to like, say like, oh, this is a, a one letter or a one word answer with seven letters. Like, I feel like that just kind of takes away from the elegance of the question a little bit. But I don't know, I feel like this was hopefully, you know, an acceptable amount without going too over. Yeah. It was, I think it definitely left some thinking where like you could, I guess this is another thing is that there, there, are, there are ways that you can get this question wrong. The light quiz, honestly, what I was worried about for a lot of it is like, what are plausible wrong answers on this quiz? Because like, the fact that every question has to contain light, like that's, that's a constraint. So, you know, people were guessing, like, Starlight, which, yeah, like, it could be. It's not a movie, but it could be. Like, I mean, okay, if you know every Oscar winner, then yes, you're not getting this wrong, probably. And then you deserve the points um, if you do, yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, that, th this question was actually one that I was, I was sitting on. I, I don't remember. I think it came, I think the song came out in 2019. And it was kind of like a meme around XXX Tentacion listeners, which I don't listen to XXX Tentacion, but... I knew people that do and spotlight on uh, moonlight uh was like the perfect example of like what the fuck is this guy talking about like, <laughs> it, makes, it, like it, it just does not mean anything at all and but then you're like whoa wait this is actually the names of the best picture winners from 2016 and 2017 <laughs> and suddenly you have a lion's den quiz lead question so it ended up it ended up working very well out of something that like was just completely random yeah i mean i mean i guess like personally for me it like it it, it 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 tickled a lot of the right spots and that like there's this like weird but funny and interesting framing element and there's like a wordplay based mm -hmm. thing that still tests real knowledge um so like that that that's one thing that i liked quite a lot um thank you yeah uh an another question that um yeah i i i don't know if this would like jump to mind instantly as like a, oh this is such an elegant benny question but like there was like um which quiz was it actually in? I think it was in Greed. Um, question five about Charles Ponzi. Like, oh, yeah. I I am not uh, good at things like, like business or finance or anything like that, and especially not the history of this stuff. So, like, the, the second I started reading this question, I was like, I'm not going to get this. What the hell is this? This is some, like, random, like like, businessmen in history, I, I know, like, the names of two people that fit that description. Um, but then, like, reading through the description a bit more, I was like, okay, if I try to engage with this and imagine what this is, wait a minute, this actually just sounds like, like a pyramid scheme. Are there any people connected to pyramid schemes? Oh, yeah, it's a Ponzi scheme. Like, 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 arriving on the correct answer after initially looking at something and being like, I won't know this, what? Like, I I enjoy that I enjoy having that feeling. I enjoy inspiring that feeling in others and like this really did it for me. So like I, I, I remember I remember like the moment it clicked for me basically and that was very, very satisfying. It's it's always more satisfying when you think you're not gonna get it and then you do. Is what I'm saying. Hundred percent. Those those moments of real of realization are like what you keep coming back for. It's one thing to just know every question, but if you are like, Oh, I actually got this one, like that's that's addictive, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Right? Like Yeah, it, I, yeah. I remember when when I was writing that question, it was like, I was trying to find a way to ask about Ponzi schemes, but like, there aren't a lot of interesting ways to do it. Because if you, if you talk about like, oh, this guy names a scheme, then everybody's going to say Ponzi or they're just not going to have any idea. They're just like, there's only really one. And so the only way that I could think of was like, describe what he did and just hope people figure out that like, this is the guy. Because I mean, it's 1920, right? Like this is, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's not a modern example. Yeah, yeah, and I guess, like, the context helps a little bit, but just, like, looking at this question and seeing so many just, like, random business and finance buzzwords, like, like, arbitrage and securities exchange company and international apply coupons, we're like, what the hell is this talking about, you know, but... I also loved, like, he, it's so it's so funny that, like, the originator of the Ponzi scheme was this, like, random, like, very obviously shell company, they were, <laughs> like, I feel like if you, if you saw a company named the securities exchange company like now you're like there's no way they're doing legitimate business in that company <laughs> and it turns out they were not doing legitimate business in that company 
Yeah, now he's immortalized for it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, good for him, though. Like, I don't think he even got arrested for it. Like, it's not Wait, illegal. What? 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 Uh, fair? Is it not? Okay, I, I, I could, I, I, could I, be I, wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I, I did, okay, I don't, uh, I don't know if, I don't, I don't want to give legal advice. This is not a, uh, <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. But he, he was just like, oh, we'll promise, like, this return within, it, it, it was like, if you if you give us your money, we'll promise you either fifty percent return in five years or a hundred percent return in ten years. And he, I mean, he did that. Well, okay, it, it was illegal that he eventually like stopped being able to pay people back. Um, but like, I don't know. I I I, I know that Bernie Madoff went to prison for a long time for running a Ponzi scheme. But I, I feel like Charles Ponzi kind of beat the case a little bit. Yeah, maybe, which, maybe. But I guess they're like they had decades and decades of time to draw up the right laws to make it so yeah. that you couldn't do that again. And anyways, <laughs> that yeah. tangent aside, um, I I also wanted to like like th this is um, not a specific question, but I also really wanted to shout out the I don't speak the language quiz. It's such a fun quiz. It's such a cool concept. I'm drawing it up on the screen, even though there's literally nothing to draw because it's just like links to clips. But like right. it's almost like for the first two weeks you had like six quizzes and one mini game that was the media quiz right and mm -hmm. like um after the m mildly controversial week one mini game i think like a lot of people appreciated this um and it was definitely on the harder side as quizzes go i think it might be one like one of our lowest not, if not the lowest average get it was rates. like 2.8 something right uh it was 2.78 yeah oh wow yeah actually the same as the pirates quiz finally <laughs> but i think that um it was like interesting and fun enough and like like a, a a different and novel enough way of testing knowledge at least within this quiz that i think even for people who didn't get that many of them right it was still like a fun experience to try to puzzle things out and of course there are people out there who did get like a lot of correct answers you know i think like like jake did crazy well um because he just has a lot of like geo and culture knowledge um gester and eleanor being like either linguistics studiers or hobbyists did really well on that quiz and so like um i don't know there, there are there are other people who did really well who i have to assume were also like people who are like, like are language knowers or appreciators of like the differences in language but like um i don't know it was just like a a, a really really fun like alternate way of asking things that um was still like doable within this format and also thankfully doesn't demonetize the video for jake so you know win-win um and, and anyways like yeah i i feel like we've talked at length before about like the individual questions and and, and like the the features of the the different clips so i won't talk too much about them here but um i i i want to shout the quiz out because i enjoyed it a lot and it remains i think one of the most unique quizzes of season one and I don't know, I, I, I hope we can do sim stuff with a similar vibe in the future. Like, not necessarily this again, but like something that feels like a mini game that, that's slightly different, but still works well in the format and has a meaningful differentiation of scores and that kind of thing. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think I've been kind of chasing the tone of that quiz a little bit throughout. Because like, you you touched on it, but it's, I mean it's a hard quiz. It came in as two point seven eight after money, so people were like getting twos and threes on it for the for a lot of them. But I feel like compared to other quizzes that got that same, like all of the questions feel somewhat accessible. Like you can you can listen to the language and guess the language, and not like okay, maybe you haven't heard some of them. Maybe Tosa, I'm not gonna try to click is not something that you've heard of before. But like Portuguese, people have heard that. You know finished you've probably heard that so you know if if a, if a quiz is hard i at least don't want it to be punishing yeah and i think some of my hard quizzes have been punishing and i think that was an example of a hard quiz that was not so yeah a quiz can be hard as long as it's different enough that that makes it fun in concept is the lesson to learn here there you go yeah in incoming like 1.2 average quiz where i don't know i just make up my own language and have you decipher it for points <laughs> I mean, I've got ideas up in my head for quizzes that, like, I think would be fun, but also require, like, a little bit more sit-down work. Mm -hmm. And as long as people are willing to, you know, put in a little bit of time, then, yeah. And I don't think you can do a week, a week's worth of super time-intensive quizzes, yeah. but, you know, just a little bit.
for you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the, I'm, I'm gonna say that you can't pick the Rebus quiz. Yeah, I mean, like the Rebus quiz, I just wouldn't have done it at all. I think with hindsight, a quiz that I would like to redo. Um, I think I kind of whiffed it on the Kazakhstan quiz. Um, mm. and I really, really wish I could redo some of that because, like, um. Like, the, the second that we learned that there was Kazakhstan Street... Well, I guess the second we learned there was Kazakhstan Street View, I was racing to Mapmaker to, like, check out the, what the what the country looked like. But then, like, very soon after that, I was like, you know what? There's so much hype around this country now. Everyone's, like, studying, like, the the town names and the, the, the seasonal coverage and the road directions of this country. I, it, it would be fun if we took this moment in the GeoGuessr zeitgeist to also talk about um, the culture of Kazakhstan. And, like... I personally have been to Kazakhstan a couple of times. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, th this is like a bit more loony lore, but like I used to have a job that involved like hopping around the world a bunch. Um, and Kazakhstan was one of the first places that I visited um, on that like long, long journey, basically. Um, and so I have a lot of appreciation for Kazakhstan because it like, it was like the start of like opening my eyes to how many different cultures and in, in the world there were like how different places could be um and so I, I really wanted to like represent that well and i think that the questions weren't written as well as they could have been as, as jake was saying in his video right like jake was not the only person to guess canal for question six he was not the only person to guess drum for the question about the dombra i could have sat down a lot more thoroughly and been like okay what are like what are some ways to uh guard against potential wrong answers or just like conceptualize certain ones better, right? Like the like the question of what general type of object is a dombra, that's like in hindsight a really terrible question because when the answer is musical instrument, that's super, super vague, right? Um and I, I and I don't think it's like a like even people who would get it right wouldn't be sure that it's the right answer. And I don't think that's necessarily what we want out of this. Like mentioning the word tambor, which sounds so close to tambourine, which I didn't realize at the time. Um and, and mentioning the oblong body without mentioning like the neck, given that it's a loot, uh, uh, you right. know, like like th there's just so much misleading stuff here um, that mm -hmm. I think that if I were to do this again, I'd try to either sit down more and uh, I, I don't know, like really like run a finer comb through it to make sure that all the questions are good. I, I I've listened to a lot of Dombra music, like I've I've watched mm -hmm. live performances of it, so like that's why I wanted to include it. Um, but ultimately, it's hard to figure out an answer line, and musical instrument is not the best answer line uh, in this case at all, which is kind of sad. But like, yeah, that's fair. I guess I guess if I think about it now, maybe you like ask a question about like it's like what other kind of instrument, and then you include the lute or something like that. Yeah, I, I was wondering if I should like pull in like mentions to like the balalaika or something, right? Because like that's also mm, like yeah, a, yeah. a string instrument in the Russian steppes area or the yeah. Central Asian steppes. But then like. I didn't because I thought that would be too well known and it was already play uh, in my head. The quiz is already pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know. I it's interesting because I think there were some very good questions on this quiz, like the uh, the Astana question, question five on the quiz. I think is a very very good question. I mean, I, it's, yeah. I like I like list questions that are simple, but also like they actually get you thinking right it's not just like oh what's the next one in the sequence it's like oh that's it. Oh, right i forgot that you know kazakhstan changed its capital and then once the guy died i don't know if they i don't know if they changed it after he died or before he died I, but they I, hopefully got off his dick basically I, I i think it was just like it, they changed it after he stopped being president to honor him and then they changed it back after a while because then they were like well all the infrastructure says astana so yeah um, that makes sense. But, I think he's yeah, still alive, I, but I'm not 100 percent sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sorry, Nurse Obton, if you're seeing this, but you know, <laughs> Mr. Know, know. Is, yeah, my bad, my bad. <laughs> uh, I, I thought that was a very good question. I think the yurt question, though it's easy, is a good you know way of asking about Kazakh culture. And yeah, I mean, I think I, part of the blame definitely falls on me because I, in playtesting, I did the, I made the error of saying drum instead of musical instrument, and it's always hard for me to know, like, okay, I made this mistake, maybe because of how the question was phrased, maybe because of my own, you know, thought process. Should I say something? Like, I don't, I don't want to be too self-centered in playtesting. I was like, oh, I think other people are going to do the same thing I did, and, but I guess that was a, a place where I should have been like, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe change this. And and also, given that you gave that answer, I probably should have 
sat down a bit longer and be like, okay, why did Benny give this answer? Would it be reasonable that other people... And, like, thinking about it for, like, a couple... Like, just a couple more moments, it would be like, yeah, this seems like a very reasonable thing for other people to say, given how unintuitive the actual answer line is. But yeah. Yeah. The canal one is actually a very different story because we were talking, I think, on the Sunday that stuff was coming in. And we were like, oh, we were like, we were, we were surprised that so many people were saying canal. And then we broke down the question. And we were like, oh, wow. Like every sentence of this question, like low key, could be <laughs> canal. Like it's a very reasonable Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two bodies well, I, of I, I water mean, it, imports the economy. Right. The, like the, it, the acronym ends with C. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, what? It played at 70%. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was just that like the, the, the balance of the quiz could have been made harder in a way that wasn't like, bad question writing basically i think the, the one where the answer was sausages and the and the indicator was what form is also suspect oh but... <laughs> yeah didn't people put like smoked and stuff like yeah, that yeah 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 oh well I, I i definitely at the very least i liked the thrust of the idea of the quiz i thought that i mean it wasn't something that i was going to consider doing at all but i was like oh yeah this is especially for the um for the audience we're writing too Very yeah, good yeah. idea um, I don't know. I think mine, my quiz that I wish I could do over is I, I, I mentioned earlier that quiz two was kind of my react, my like easy week, for, I think. Like mm -hmm. it was my reaction to having hard quizzes in week one. And I think the James Bond quiz that I wrote for a variety of reasons ended up not how I wanted it. I was kind of worried about like, about the topic in general. Like, I, I don't know. I think I feel like James Bond, I, I didn't want to be like, Oh, look, I'm this like 22 year old white guy. Watch me write six questions about James Bond and you have to <laughs> care about it now and answer it. So I was a little bit worried that like, you know, the, the general populace wouldn't vibe with the, uh, the topic in general. I thought that I could still make a, a, an accessible quiz. And I think it, accessibility wasn't the problem because I think every question on this quiz was over 50% get rate, which is, <laughs> I mean, great job, but that's not what I want. I think one of the reasons that it sticks out to me is because I wrote eight questions for that quiz. So the, the, the two, the two like options that I had was I, I was going to put in either the Hans Zimmer score question, which played at 86% was the easiest question, um, or a question about, um, Andrew Scott, who played a role in Spectre, and I was going to clue stuff that wasn't Spectre because nobody's going to get it if I only clue that. Um, and then instead of the name of villain in the series, I was going to ask about what I think, again, would be a much harder question about, like, what the movie Skyfall is actually named after a literal thing. What is Skyfall? I think it was kind of, it was, it was, a, it was a perfect storm of, like, I was worried about things playing too easy, but then also we had the new like Jake Lyons week one video crowd in and you know, the people that come from a video about trivia and join a discord server because they want to play more trivia are probably going to be, you know, on the upper end. Right. So I think I kind of got, got caught unawares with that. And some of the question writing wasn't great either, but it's like, I feel like it, I, I, I can see that quiz being done well. And I just, I, I think I could have done it a lot better. So that's yeah. my that's my regret, I guess. And as you took a little bit of responsibility for the Kazakhstan one, I'll, I I need to take a bit of responsibility here too because when like, like you, you had given me the alternates for the question, like the alternate questions you mentioned, right, about Andrew Scott and mm -hmm. about Skyfall, um, uh, and like when we were talking about it, I like I think I suggested the easier ones, like I I suggested these ones because like in my mind they were a bit more accessible. Um, and I ultimately, like, agree that, um, that probably was not the right decision, necessarily. Um, uh, and, you know, that, that, that's also, I think we were both caught a little bit unawares by the influx, and I think that the, the target audience was, like, m was shifting a little, not target, I'm sorry, the audience itself was shifting a little bit week by week, and, like, mm -hmm. the adjustments that we were making also had to account for the changing audience too and that's something that i think you know it's it's hard to predict i'm i'm very on, honestly like genuinely i'm very glad that we have a range of people i think it would be it's a lot more interesting for me to write to a range of people than it is for like oh the just you know if if i were to just take the top 10% of the leaderboard i don't think that would be very fun to write to on a week to week basis so i'm very 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 glad that you know we have this range and i hope that just because you're you don't see your name in a medal doesn't mean that you want to stop playing the quizzes now but 
yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, I'm hoping that people who aren't necessarily, like, at the top end of every leaderboard, like, also find some value in here. Because, like, the, the way that I write questions also, like, like, I try to write questions on topics that I personally find to be interesting or that, like, you know, mm -hmm. there are stories behind that might, like, it, like propel research or curiosity. And so I'm hoping that, you know, some of the people out there uh, are playing either to, like, m might be playing to, like, you know, share their knowledge, but also to, like, learn more about some stuff that are interesting. And, and maybe it's a little bit, like, self-serving to be like, haha, let's... Let, 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 let's make everybody look at the things that I personally find interesting. But, like, my my hope is that there's stuff in here that can be engaging for people who aren't necessarily, like, you know, in the running to get every single question right. Um, that's the hope. And, like, the, the, right. the, the wider variety, I think, the more interesting the League is. I agree, definitely. I Honestly, I think there's some kind of positive to being a slightly... Okay. I'm gonna, th this comes with like super heavy caveats, right? But I think having a little bit of like, oh, I think this is interesting. I think other people, like I, I, I think I'm gonna write this question because I think it's interesting and I want other people to know about it. As long as you do it right, I think that's a good thing. Like you shouldn't be asking about these random obscure topics because you like them and nobody else does. <laughs> like that's not, I, I just don't enjoy that kind of trivia personally. But you know, I, I think, what we both do is we do stuff like, oh, this is like, we'll research questions and we'll find like, oh, this is pretty interesting. It'll make for a good trivia question. And it ends up, I mean, I guess we've just experienced enough trivia to kind of have our fingers a little bit on the pulse of that. So like, it usually ends up pretty interesting. And I think, I, I think it's more, I think it's better when you when you care about what you're writing than when you do. Like, I think in the Kazakhstan quiz, even if it didn't turn out the way that you wanted to, like, I think certainly your knowledge showed and not just your knowledge, but like that, that transferred into like, oh, this is actually an interesting quiz and thus the country is interesting. And so, you know, stuff like that trickles down. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I do still yeah, think it's right. an interesting country. I, oh, I still have like the very first time I visited Kazakhstan, I was gifted like this, like, this giant hat and this really cool robe that I'm now forgetting the name of, which I'm embarrassed about. But like, like I, I still have that in my possession. Like eight years later, Very that's fun. sick. Is it like one of those like like Argentinian like uh, pampa like robes kind of thing? I know. Like what the wait, I can I can get it if you want to see. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait one sec. Ooh. I know there's a very particular way the headgear is supposed to go, and I don't actually know if this is the right way, so apologies to uh, <laughs> Kazakh culture, but like, yeah, this is very, like, you know, I, I, I still have this. I don't wear it often, but it's fun to have. That's sick. It, it, it looks, it, it's very, it, it almost feels like popey. Like, the hat is very in the shape of... Oh, yeah, a little like bit. Anyways. <laughs> nice. Okay, I, I, I think that it is still in the early days of the LDQL. I want to see if during Season 2 we can figure out, um, I guess, like more concrete strategies for engagement or retention or that kind of thing. I know that there were some people who like um, mentioned they were trying out the League and it might not necessarily be for them, which is totally fine. Like, like you know, I don't want to be like, you got to play, <laughs> you got to stay. But like, if there's ways that we can inspire people or like, if, if there's ways that we can create some kind of engagement for people to be interested who aren't necessarily, like, always at the top, um, I, I think that'd be fun, especially, like, as I mentioned earlier, because, like, I think it's more fun when, like, there's more diverse skill sets coming into this, because you never know when, like, like you know, a, a, a quiz that it's really up your alley is going to happen, you know, like, I think there were a lot of math people who, even if they weren't doing necessarily, like, you know, like, super well or at the top previously you know could come on the math quiz and be like instantly sixing everything yeah so like i'm, I'm hoping to do that maybe by like I, like tackling more niche topics or like i know that we were talking about um doing a thing where we could have people potentially suggest either quiz titles or general concepts that we could then like interpret in our own ways which might be kind of interesting yeah I mean, I think that would be both fun for us and fun, hope uh, maybe fun for people. I don't know. It it kind of offloads the work of thinking of quiz ideas to other people. <laughs> that's awesome. The hardest because, part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were talking at one point about how like that's that that's a rough part. Like, if you just asked me to write six unthemed questions, I could do it 
fine, but that's not very interesting. And, but so it actually, you know, the, the theme part is tricky and, and having other people decide themes for you seems like a, a fun, a fun idea. Are you, I, I'm, I'm willing to commit to the, the schedule of five weeks on two weeks off. If you are, I am too. I mean, like, the, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think there was a particular reason that we said four weeks on one week off other than like, it was the first one, so we didn't want to like overstep it. I think like the like the way that Lions Deadly works, it's like it's like Lions Deadly is really front loaded, so longer seasons are fine. Like we do a lot of mapping at the very start, we do a lot of mapping in the middle, and then that's it. Whereas th this is just like a more constant process, right? And as as people can probably tell from the fact that like there was a Kazakh Sun quiz in week four, um, you know that probably wouldn't have been written the week earlier than that. Writing for five straight weeks, like one trial week plus four weeks of the main season, um, that like at the end of that, I was starting to feel a little burnt out. Um, yeah. So with like a five week regular season and two week off, I think that's enough time to recuperate and like get back in for the next one. Personally yeah, that's speaking. fair. I think that. Yeah. So I guess that'll be the the, the format going forwards: five weeks on, two weeks off. Well, we'll repeat. I, I guess that'll be important for season two, and then if it's, maybe something will change. I don't know, but... True. Yeah. In my humble opinion, I think season one was pretty... Like, on the, on the continuum of how things... How I expected things to go, it was pretty pretty high. Like, so first of all, so much, like, immediate pickup of it. Like, I was glad that so many people just decided to do it. Um, and then I was glad that people stuck around. So now our job becomes making sure that they stick around longer. But, you know, that's fine yeah. like it, it's a good problem to have it's better than trying to drag people who don't care there are things that i didn't attempt in season one because i was not sure of like the makeup of the league um like audience wise like I, we were talking in the in, in jake's server on my sunday night monday morning about sports and whether that has been over or underrepresented, well, it, it definitely hasn't been overrepresented. That's for damn sure. Um, <laughs> but people were saying it was underrepresented, and you know, I think, I'm, of course, I'm going to say this, and then the sports quiz that I end up writing is going to be god awful. But I was like, yeah, okay, I think I can, I think I can write a sports quiz now with with a little bit better understanding of the audience. I think I could write a quiz like that that gets reasonable conversion and is engaging and you know hits the standards i feel like we both have relatively high standards for ourselves um it's the standards that i have for my quizzes so i think i'm i'm looking forward to continuing to be experimental like i haven't i don't think i've really run out of ideas yet um so i'm looking forward to continuing being experimental with a better grasp of who i'm writing for because I mean that's that's what it's about at the end of the day. Like it's great if I write fun trivia, but if nobody that I write it for enjoys it, like I don't know, does it make a sound? Like I want I, I want to write good stuff that people are also going to enjoy. So yeah, all right. So anyway, yeah, I don't know. Thank you all for listening. God, this is it's going to be incredibly will, long. I'll I'll edit it a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, at any rate. Yeah. Thank uh, you. For, yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. We hope to see you in season two. It'll be fun. I promise. Got lots of ideas cooking up in my in my like, a drafts document already. <laughs> Good. I like that. I I've got. I, I was thinking of one earlier today. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can produce something good for you guys. And yeah, thanks for hope thanks so, for yeah. listening. Thanks for playing all of that. Hope to see you next season, and uh, which, which yes. will have lots of fun content uh, to explore. All right, I'm gonna end all the right. recording now. I don't know yes. about the music. <laughs>